How's it going everybody and welcome to Cub Fans Minecraft. Today is episode 101 of Cub Fans Minecraft Let's Play. And I hope you all enjoyed the episode 100 special last time. We had a full two hour long episode where I went around and toured everything in the world. So go ahead and watch that if you haven't already. Pretty good episode. We also did like, did like a Q&A and had a big fireworks show. And the one thing that I'm still missing in this world, as you might have noticed from last episode, is a beacon block. And the beacon block, of course, requires you to kill the wither and get the nether star and then craft a beacon with that. Um, so that's what we're going to go ahead and do this episode. Uh, but before that, let's go ahead and head back inside. And we're going to enchant a pick because I have quite a number of XP levels at the moment. Hoping to get a good work pick because we already have two Fortune 3 picks and a Silk Touch pick, but let's see what we got. Silk Touch Unbreaking 3. Okay, so that is exactly the same as this pick. Uh, let's see if we can add anything else to it that would make it worthwhile. Fortune 2 wouldn't really help too much. Unbreaking 3, we already have that on there. Uh, yeah, not really a whole lot we can add to make that any more useful but I guess we'll just have to use that as our work pick for now alright so in this episode we're going to go to the nether and I will show you how we're going to at least try to get uh, these wither skeletons to spawn so we'll just make our way here to the nether Alright, let's see if we have any fire resistance potions. We don't, we just have some swiftness potions here. That's okay. Let's go ahead and head out here. And I want you guys to get a good sense of this area here. Um, because as it currently stands, we have our castle here. And our dual blaze spawners are over there with the rest of our nether fortress. But as I've said in previous episodes, this fortress is a dead fortress. Um, a lot of you probably know what that means if you play yourself. Uh, basically, basically no uh, another fortress mobs will spawn here any longer because of the changes to fortress generation in 1.6.2. So take a good look at this fortress. You'll see our two blaze spawners over there. Uh, there are some some mobs still spawning up there uh, but none of them down here in in this region uh, or close by to us uh, it sounds like there might be some down here maybe no I don't see any just ambient ambient noises but um, yeah there's a lot of empty space here in this this version of the game this version of the nether but let me go ahead and switch to 1.6.2. Um, I'll, I'll choose a vantage point that will make it more apparent. So we'll go right here. So this is the fortress as it generated in whichever version I went to the nether in. Pre 1.6, let's say. And we'll switch to the next version. Let's see, there's, there's some mob spawn in there. Uh, we'll switch to 1.6.2 and I'll show you the fortress in that version. Okay, everybody, so I made a creative world in 1.6.2 using the same seed that we have. And basically, you can see that the swamp biome we currently live in has shifted and is instead replaced by an extreme hills biome, as you can see there. Uh, but I placed another portal in the exact same spot as it is in our world. And I'll go through and show you uh, what the changes are. Alright, we'll wait for some of these ambient sounds to go away. Okay, so this is where our castle is, and the portal's in the, pretty much the exact same spot, just rotated 90 degrees. Um, in our world, our nether wart farm is right in this wall here, and of course there is no quartz around. Uh, but remarkably, the terrain is exactly the same. Uh, the only thing is I just took out this entire mountain here. Uh, and you can see that where I did that a few episodes back. But the biggest change is this nether fortress. So before we were standing right here and we saw a bunch of open space before the nether fortress. But now in 1.6.2 there is one of the best fortresses I've seen in game. 
that generates there. Um, the fortress that we have in our world actually is still here. You can see that here with this cutoff bit here. Um, and of course the dual blaze spawners over right there and right there. Uh, so this portion of the fortress is the same. Um, so I'm not quite sure, certain why it's not spawning mobs, but regardless, uh, Mojang has changed fortress generation. So now the fortress comes all the way up to almost where our nether castle is at that portal. Um, and if we just go inside here, you'll see what we would have gotten had we waited to 1.6.2 to generate the nether. Some nice horse armor, some armor. Uh, what do we got here? More horse armor, stuff like that. So what I'm planning to do now is recording the, the coordinates of where this fortress generates in 1.6.2, then going and building platforms there in our survival world. So that way we can get, you know, these blaze, skeletons, wither skeletons, and actually uh, get some fortress mobs again near our, near our nether castle. So that's the plan. I'm just going to go ahead and record some of these some of these values and make some platforms and we'll see if we can get some wither skeletons to spawn in our in our survival world. Well, 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 look what we have here. A group of wither skellies spawning on our pad that we made. So we are on the right track in terms of this. Let's go battle them. First of all, let's get a uh, fire resistance potion. And yeah, guys, this is what we were looking for all along. Let's drink this, and hopefully we will not die or accidentally hit a pigman or something like that. Let's see, ideally we went one at a time, but... Oh, these pigmen are in the way. A bit. And we don't want these guys to fall off the side, so let's sort of draw them into a bigger region where we feel more comfortable going at them. All right. Good stuff. Yep. Let's draw these guys over here as well. Still coming after us. All right. Not bad there. I think we got a. No, we didn't get a. We didn't get a head there. There we go. All right. So weather skeletons are spawning on here. I'll continue to build up some of this uh, this other fortress here, and we'll go from there. Okay, everybody, check this out. There's literally a ghast in my my nether castle. This happens every once in a while. And that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Can I hit him, I wonder, from here? No, okay. Uh, yeah, this is some flammable stuff here. You got wool and wood. So I'm going to go ahead and take them out, but I just wanted to show you that does happen from time to time. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. It's happened. Uh, this is the first time it's happened up here, but it happened. It happened one other time down in the main room there. Um, so yeah, kind of uh, kind of unique. Okay, everybody. So as you can see here, we got another wither skull from uh, wither skeleton, which spawned on our uh, our new cobblestone platforms, which mimics a 1.6.2 fortress. Uh, but before we go to the nether, and you'll see I made some other changes over there, I want to show you what I've been doing in the overworld in the meantime. Um, so first of all, I added on a few layers to my uh, sugarcane farm here. So it now produces three stacks of sugarcane instead of just two. Um, and I'm going to, I'm planning on adding a lot more layers to that. Uh, so we can get four, five, six, seven stacks, you know. Uh, also I made this horse, uh, quick horse uh, holder. Let me show you how it works. And the reason I made that thing is because with 1.7 coming out we're going to have to travel uh, via horse to so 
from far off places. And that guy doesn't have a saddle on. This guy has a saddle on. Yep, so I'll show you how it works here. Uh, and we want some place where we can quickly uh, quickly get our horse. And if we forget something, come and just drop them off. And I have to take them all the way back to the stable or tie them up outside of our house. So we come in here like this. There we go. This mount, we come out outside and the horse is trapped in there. And I'll go ahead and go inside and sleep temporarily. And then the next day when we come back out or after we've gathered some supplies, we can easily hop back on the horse, point the opposite direction, and we're ready to go back to wherever it is we came from. So that's a pretty simple method of dropping off a horse quickly if we forget something in our base or something of that nature. So I'll just drop on over here, get the lead back, and put it in like that. Okay, everybody, so now our horses are all back in the stable. I want to show you one other thing in the overworld before we head to the nether to fight the wither. So around the nether portal, I made sort of like an arch thing around it and put some flaming pillars and made a nice little little path here. And I think it really accentuates <coughs> the, uh, the nether portal a little bit. I'm not crazy about the stone brick, so if you guys have other suggestions about what I should try there, uh, I'd be willing to change this to something like maybe a regular bricks or maybe sandstone. But I think we're going to keep it like that for now. Uh, it looks, looks pretty decent, I think. But let's go ahead and head to the nether now. Alright. Okay. So, now that we're in the nether, uh, some of you might be wondering why I'd want to fight the wither in a place where there's tons of lava everywhere and huge cliffs and drop-offs. Well, uh, the reason is I don't want to fight the wither in the overworld due to regeneration and health potions being severely nerfed. It's now incredibly difficult to fight the wither on hard difficulty with those buffs. Um, so instead what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the wither in a bedrock tomb, so to speak. So let's see, we're at 124, we want to go to 031 is what we want to go to. Or I think 0 minus 31. So let's see, 0 is here, minus 31 is this way. Let's see. I'm uh, going the wrong way here. Darn it. Well. Let's see. Minus 31 will be this way. So it'll be along this route. Put this there to block that off. So it'll be around, around that area up there. And so we'll do this. We'll go up here. And a little known fact about Minecraft is that gas will shoot you off tall pillars if you're not careful. No. Uh, bedrock is actually... Shoot. Okay, we're up, up here. Don't want to fall off. Gotta get up here. Alright, so what I, was, what I was going to say is that the bedrock layers of all the Minecraft nethers are exactly the same. Um, so, uh, this spot here I'm looking for, uh, let's see, 7, 6, so I'm going to go this way. The spot I'm looking for here has a 3x3 three three area of bedrock. And if you can find a 3x3 three three area of bedrock uh, with an open block above it and nether, you can actually put the wither in that and then easily kill him. So let me find this area here and I'll be back. Okay guys, I found my spot in the nether here. We are at 0, minus 30. 
and we're going to spawn the wither into that block there. So, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take a piston, place it down like that, lever down like that, and then we're just going to go ahead and spawn the wither here. Oh, not, that, not like that. Huh. There we go. Like that. And then, let's see, should be pushed up into that block there. So one, two, and then three, and I'm going to run back here a little way so I don't get hit by the initial big explosion. Three. Push him up there. Wait for the explosion. Another star. All right. Sweet. So that makes it super simple. So I can just come up here and kill Wither anytime I want to, basically. With this, just a piston and a lever. Nice. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get back down now. Um, and we can make our, our beacon block. And let's see, this is where we go down at. Right here. I should probably consider making a ladder up and wow. Express route. Hit him. That's right. Sniped. Sniped. Okay. So yeah, I killed our first wither like that. And as I said, the only reason I do that method is because it is insanely difficult in single player after those potion uh, nerfs to actually kill the wither on hard. I could try it on uh, normal or easy, but I've tried it in creative mode, like in like in a uh, super flat world on hard, and it's basically impossible even with maxed out gear and potions. It's very very difficult. Um, so let's go ahead and get the things we need for the beacon. We'll go ahead and do. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do obsidian. We need, what else? Glass. Glass. A couple pieces of glass. I think I need a little bit more obsidian here. And I think it's glass. Obsidian. Another star? Nope. Maybe, um, I'm thinking it's that. There we go. Alright, so there's our first beacon there. Now we just got to decide where we want to put it. Okay, everybody, after thinking about it for a long time, I decided we're probably going to go ahead and put this beacon in this area here. Um, reason being is because I want to, first of all, bury it down near bedrock, so that way we get the maximum area of effect. Uh, the way beacons work is that the the buffs come off of, or are based off of the beam itself, not where the beacon is placed. Um, so to get the maximum volume of effect, you want to always bury your beacons close to bedrock. So if you didn't know that before, now you know. And also, I'm planning to expand my house a little bit in some of the future episodes. So for instance, we'll have uh, a room up here on the third story. And I may extend this over here, so we'll have like a hallway here. And yeah, I think it would be cool to have like a uh, like a walkway connecting like the bathroom area to this area, and might put some more rooms up here. Uh, but regardless, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and dig down to bedrock level here, and we'll go ahead and leave a uh, four by four area open uh, here because eventually I want to have four beacons here, so we can have maximum buffs in this area. Uh, and we should also grab some iron. And for this first beacon, we'll go ahead and make the, the biggest pyramid possible. We'll make the 9x9, nine nine, and we'll use iron blocks. I think we got enough. Let's see, that's 128. Yeah, we got more than enough. We got like... Yeah, we got a ton here. We only need 164, so this, this is enough. 
Uh, and we'll go ahead and dig out this area all the way down to bedrock area. And there's a cave here. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and do that, and I'll be back once we are there. And I should probably drink a fire resistance potion so we don't so we don't burn in lava here. Okay, everybody, so we are down here, uh, let's see, at what level we're at, Y equals 10, and I think this is a good spot to put the, uh, the beacon, and I went ahead and cleared out an area, uh, 10 by 10 instead of 9 by 9, so that way we can, uh, easily add other beacons in those four spots, uh, eventually, but for now, I think we'll go ahead and put the first beacon here, so we'll go out 1, 2, 3, 4, one, one, two, three, four. There we go. And then the same on this side. And then two, three, four. Two, three, four. Just like that. And we'll fill this all in. A lot of iron going down here. But I think it will be well worth it. So the first layer has to be 9x9, nine nine. second layer 7x7, seven seven, then 5x5, five five, and finally 3x3 three three on top, and it does have to be, uh, does have to be full, like you can't have any hollow spaces. So we'll just go ahead and do that, okay, let's make sure we're in the middle here, this one, okay, then we do a 7x7. Seven something like this and come out three blocks just like that and then we'll continue on like this and I'll probably cut the video here and I'll be back once we have the beacon pyramid complete okay so we got the whole pyramid complete we're clear up to the world height here so we'll go ahead and place our beacon down and it should start to light up the area alright good stuff and you'll see I left a spot here on the outside uh, that's for future beacons so we don't have to spend quite as many uh, blocks to make another one uh, so let's go ahead and get some iron and we will see what we want to put on this I think we're gonna wanna go ahead and put on speed and we can also do regen I think are, are pretty good so we should get those buffs here in a second. Yep, there we go. Speed and regen. Nice. Alright. And, yeah, I'll go ahead and make my way back up. Uh, I'm out of pearls, so I'll just have to walk up via these caves. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and tower up, but you'll see, uh, once I get up to the surface here, even though I am... There we go. So even though I am more than 50 blocks away from the beacon, I still get the buff. Uh, and I can even go, you know, way over here, where I'm definitely way than, more than 50 blocks from the beacon and still get the buff because the buff comes out of the beam itself there. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go inside and get some glass. cover that so that we don't fall down into this hole here. Alright, there we go. Good stuff. Alright everybody, so we now have speed buff and a regeneration buff, and the regen buff will help us not to use as much food since it now takes uh, saturation to uh, heal yourself. Instead, the beacon will do most of the work now. So that's pretty good. As I said before, I'm hoping to get three more beacons at least in this area. Hopefully get jump boost, strength, uh, haste, everything like that. So uh, we'll come down here to the mine shaft now, and we'll see what today's highlighted channel is. And thank you all for all your kind comments on the 
100th episode video. I think a lot of you guys really enjoyed that a lot. And I really enjoyed making it. So we'll get down here to the end of the mine shaft. There we go. And let's see, I think we are... Yeah, we're right here now. So today's highlighted channel is Jose... Whoop. Jose Moreno. So a little bit about Jose Moreno's channel. Uh, whoops. Did not see that coming. Let me plug up this hole. Uh, he doesn't have any videos up yet, but he is a big supporter of the Minecraft community. And he's had some really nice things to say about my channel last episode, so I want to say thank you very much, Jose. This is the whole pool back here, apparently. Uh, this is your mine shaft. Uh, let's see how you do against the other competitors. Okay, everybody just finished digging out Jose Moreno's mine shaft, and we got the following resources. Uh, a bit of redstone, small bit of coal, and just a little bit of iron. Uh, the total points for that mine shaft equal 1,048 points, so I'll head back to the uh, main area over here, and I'll be back. Okay, everybody, and unfortunately, Jose's mine shaft did not have enough points to make it onto the Season 2 leaderboard. Uh, that happens sometimes, but... Uh, it sort of is what it is, I guess. Uh, anyway, guys, I just want to say thank you for the great response I had to uh, episode 100. A lot of you seem to like the longer episode, uh, the complete world tour, the fireworks show, and the question and answer session was also very popular. Uh, thank you all for all the birthday wishes as well. And glad we finally got the beacon up in our world now, so hopefully we get a bunch more uh, relatively soon. So, thank you all for watching, everybody. This has been Cub Fan. Goodbye.